Hi, and welcome to video where we take a look at face and eye detection, and we're going to use HAR cascade classifiers to do both. So let's move on into our IPython notebook where we execute this lesson. Okay, so let's start with code number 13, which is face and eye detection with HAR cascade classifiers. So just go ahead and open this notebook, and we can see the code is actually fairly short for each of them. There's different variations of the same thing. So let's step through this code first before we actually run this. So firstly, when using HAR cascade classifiers, you always need to load your HAR cascade classifiers. So I have a few classifiers in a folder called HAR cascades in your images folder, which you would have seen, hopefully. And this one I'm going to use is called HAR cascade frontal face default. It's one of the best facial recognition, facial detection HAR cascade classifiers. And they're all stored in .xml formats. And they're, they're fairly big. They're like between 10 and maybe 100 meg, some of them. And the image I'm going to load is one of you've seen in the previous section or slides, where it's a picture of myself. And what we do, we convert it to grayscale. And the reason we convert it to grayscale is that you don't need color. It can work with color, but you don't need a color image to detect a face. Whether the face is in color or black and white, the face itself is still fairly recognizable. And what it helps do, it helps speed up the process of the detection. And so what we next do here is that we use this function here called face classifier dot detect multiple scale that comes from this object here and that basically runs through our image without some parameters here which we'll discuss later on some of these parameters are fairly good settings for this and what it does it stores faces now faces here is a tuple of coordinates the top left coordinates and the bottom right coordinates of the face which we can then use later on here using the rectangle function to draw a region over the face so we get this the rectangle or the bounding box over the face. So let's take a look and run this. So now you can see it's a fairly simple process. The only thing I didn't explain was these two lines right here. If there are no faces in that are found in the image, it's just gonna print no faces found. So we don't actually need to do this, to be fair. Okay, this is probably gonna be skipped because there's nothing in faces here and it's destroyed window. So let's take a look at this code. All right, so we have my face here. This is the original image and Actually, I kind of like missed a big important part of it there because it actually found my face. So this is my face right here, highlighted in pink in the image. So this is pretty cool. So we can see it worked fairly well. Now let's try it on a different image here. Namely, this is the input. And let's see what happens. No faces found. So you can see it works as we expected. One thing I made a mistake with, these files are actually a lot smaller than I mentioned. They're like all under one meg, actually somewhere like 100K. I was confusing it with some neural networks I trained previously, which are indeed quite large, definitely over 10 megs, most of them, some of them actually 200 megs. But those are very complicated neural networks. So forget about that. Just remember these files are very small. Now let's combine face and eye detection. So remember I said you can run multiple horror cascade classifiers in parallel. That's exactly what we're going to do. And let me show you how it's done with our code. So we will load our two horror cascade classifiers here. And these are the objects we created. We grayscale our image again, and then we run the faces algorithm again. Sorry, the facial, the faces, the face detection, I should say. And we get our faces here. And if no faces are found, we just print no faces again. But what we're going to do now, we are just going to draw the region here as well. And we basically just draw it over a color and crop a color and grayscale image. The reason we crop a grayscale image off it is because we're running the grayscale one in our I classifier here, so ROI gray. Okay, so if this isn't clear, what we're doing, we're taking the face that we found from here, faces, and then what we're doing, we're just drawing a rectangle like we did before, but we're using a cropping method to crop the grayscale region out of it here. We run the grayscale version of our face, only our face, so it's a tinier, much tinier image now, and then we run the shoot eye classifier and get the eyes, and then we draw the eyes again here. So let's take a look at this. All right, that's what we expected. That's the first vision. Now it should find my eyes. There we go. So we got a first eye, second eye. Good. I've got two eyes and it got both of them correctly. Now, what we're about to do is pretty cool. We're going to do some live face and eye detection using your webcam. So what this does here, basically I've created a function here that does this here and it returns the image where the eyes and face is detected. And then what we're going to do, we're going to open our webcam here, run this function with our frame, our extracted frame from our webcam, 
and highlight the region where the face and the eyes are here. So let's take a look at this. Mind you, I'm not video ready right now, but you can see it actually gets my eyes and face. And what, look what happens when I run my hand over. You can see the image flips and all the regions that with, had my eye and face gone. Now the reason I flipped the image was just because I wanted to illustrate the image mirror type effect. So you can just flip an image so it's more real world to you. So your left is your left and that kind of stuff. It's not that important. I just wanted to show you guys it. So you can see now we have done a few different cool classifiers here. Face, face and eye, and a live face and eye. And you can see how it runs pretty quickly. Now let's discuss tuning of cascade or har cascade classifiers. So these are the two regions here that tune the sensitivity of our har cascade classifier. So take a look at scale factor. Scale factor specifies how much we reduce the image each time we scale. So remember we talked about image pyramiding? Well, image pyramiding is sort of used here where we scale the regions of the window that we're looking at. So we can actually detect smaller faces in the images here. However, if you use smaller values like this here, remember you're just doing a lot more different versions of that scale. So it's going to take a lot longer to compute. What about minimum neighbors? That's another parameter we can use. Now this specifies the number of neighbors each potential window should have that it could consider the positive detection. So typically we use this as a sensitivity setting and we set it to between three and six. Now what happens is that low values will sometimes detect multiple faces on a single face. So what it is, is saying is that if there's one face, you may get two windows over that face if that value is low. And if there are high values, it may end up missing a face sometimes though, okay? But high values will ensure less false positives. So if you absolutely need to know if a face is there as opposed to not a face, you can up this value. So that's it for this video right now. So just to summarize what we've learned here, we just learned how to do face and eye detection using hard cascade classifiers in OpenCV, and you've learned to do this using a webcam as well. So now let's move on to car and people detection in the next video. Thank you.